Hey, what is going on everybody? In today's video, it's going to be a lot different from what I normally upload. When I normally upload a video, it's just content of me winning, fragging out, doing all the usual stuff inside of, you know, regular games and that sort of thing. Well, today we're going to be going over tips and tricks, how to use movement, how to win 1v2 situations, and how to get better at gunplay in the game. So I recently got a DM on Instagram and they wanted me to do a segment on how to, you know, improve in the game and different ways to, you know, get better at strafing and different mechanics to help you win gunfights. So I'm gonna go a little bit deeper than that and I'm gonna go into how to 1v2, how to 1v3. I'm gonna go into how to take height and how to utilize height in different positions in the game to actually um, overthrow your enemies and win more fights in, in a general sense. So this isn't a settings video, this is more of a game knowledge type thing where I'm gonna be showing you different movement mechanics I'm going to be showing you different strategies and different um, ways to utilize the environment around you to actually come on top in most situations. Now, don't go into this thinking that you're going to become a god. And like I like to tell people that with every video like this that they see, because just because you watch a video showing you how to be better doesn't mean it's going to happen right away. You're going to have to use these different mechanics and different movements. You're going to have to master them, get good with them, even in the beginner level. <clears throat> and then you're going to be able to really you know, see how that works and how you can utilize them. And some people even take like completely different movement mechanics. Like if I have a video that shows 10 different mechanics that I like to use, they'll dissect them and mi mix match them a little bit and then make up their own way. But for the main part, um, the first part of this video is going to be inside the firing range where I'm going to be showing strafing. I'm going to be showing how to utilize different weapon attachments and, and different stuff like that. And then I'm going to do breakdowns on how I 1v2 and 1v3 situations. And then for the other half of the video, because it's so long, I'm going to be going into a real game with real people, and I'm going to be having a live commentary showing how I think when I approach a certain fight and how I approach third parties. And uh, so you can see firsthand what I go through when I approach these situations. This way, it's not just me talking about it and, you know, after I'm done talking about it, that's it. I'm going to show real proof with real uh, game footage. So this way, you guys can completely encompass... The depth of what to do because I'll be literally doing it inside of a real game. I hope you guys do enjoy this video. I'm going to see you guys in the firing range. Another notable thing that I should mention is that in the firing range, if you want some kind of like simulation practice, um, you can go do the Easter egg up top where you know you go on that ledge, you turn on the robots, you, you don't have any weapons like activated. You can look up how to do that, or I might show you a little bit later, but you can actually have these guys move and shoot at you. So you can get a better feel of what um, a real gunfight would be. The only problem I have with that is these guys tend to like not miss because you know they're AI, so they know where you are at all times. They track you almost perfectly, but uh, movement won't really work on them as much as it would a real player that has human error. So like when you're fighting a real person, they won't be aiming at you all the time. They won't hit all of their shots. You know what I mean? These guys they hit most of their shots, so it's. It's harder to get a grasp on what to do in that situation. All right, so the first thing I'm going to go over um, is just strafing in general. So when you when you are strafing, you want to combine a mix of crouch, uncrouch, and different mechanics. So when you're fighting somebody, they're going to be aiming at you. And typically when you crouch, your whole hitbox becomes smaller. So like he's standing up, you know, his head's vulnerable. But when you're crouched, there's less body material to aim at for a sense. And you can just mainly hit the head. I mean, with, you know, our aim assist and everything that we have, it's a lot easier to do so. But if you do multiple of these movements, it really throws them off because this guy's standing still. I mean, if you're crouched standing still like this and, you know, you're opening fire on him and you're blasting him, of course, it's going to be easier for him to hit you in the head than it would be for, you know, the opposite way. So what I like to do, um, if you have like a scuff controller with paddles or if you have like the PlayStation add-on, PlayStation actually sells... Um, paddles that you can plug into the back bar and there's just two paddles added there that you know can help with you know you could program one to crouch you could program one to stand up or jump and that strike packs you know you can put mods on those so I don't really like those at all because they can like turn a 301 fully automatic and for single fire and everything so I try and stay away from strike packs because it gets some people really angry but um, regardless when I when I approach a fight and if I'm just aping somebody I'm gonna go up here I'm gonna combine a series of movements so I'm gonna crouch while shooting, I'm going to uncrouch and then I'm going to strafe back the other way. So this will like help you be harder to hit for one. And two, you, you got to practice on these dummies keeping an accurate target. So when I'm crouch spamming, 
Okay, it's not gonna look like this where most people in the beginning they're gonna be like all over the place. You're gonna wanna get like a grasp of where he is. So when you crouch spam, you really can like open fire on the on the person. And it's always gonna be messy. Like it's always gonna be messy, but you're gonna wanna bounce and you're gonna wanna like do a lot of that. So just practice crouch, shoot, uncrouch. Like even small movements will allow you to be better at uh, crouch spamming. Now, number two, okay, when you're holding something like a 301 or any assault rifle, your your strafe speed is reduced because it's a bigger weapon. So going left and right in a gunfight actually helps a lot because some people, you know, they have a hard time tracking you. So when you're moving to the left, they got to keep up with you, but you got to be able to, you know, aim. So when you're ADSing with an assault rifle, you'll see this is this is the standard movement speed right here. You're going relatively slow, so it's harder for you to actually dodge bullets and dodge shots, which is why I like to un-ADS and get that little speed boost back, ADS, you know, make it harder to hit. When you're using something like a wingman, it's not necessarily a problem. You can strafe all day. You can strafe all day, stay on target, you know, and you got to switch it up. So people um, really quickly can adapt, especially if they're better players. So if you're doing a left-right uh, strafe, they can see what you're doing and they can track you. So what you gotta do is you gotta like break their mind a little bit. It's all psychological. So when you're going left and right and you're shooting at them, they're gonna expect you to go left. So go hard right, go hard left, and then just keep bobbing, weaving, throw some crouches in there, you know, make it a little bit complicated for them to understand what you're doing. Now, when you're playing like a movement character, it's a lot easier because you can like manipulate everything. Like when I'm Valkyrie and I'm, I'm up close in someone's face, I typically jump behind them, you know, get, get those easy shots in. You, you wanna bounce, you wanna add some jumps. You don't want to make it like super uh, easy for them to kill you. So do some unpredictable stuff. Like if you're Valkyrie and you know you're staying here and you're shooting him, and he's getting the best of you, it's gonna be harder for him to do this. So like if Valkyrie's right here and she jumps over, they gotta track her going all the way around. Some people play on some low sensitivities, so like it takes them a long time to really like, you know re get, get back on target and everything. So typically what I like to do is I like to throw it off. Like even like with Wraith, like if you're getting low and you queue away. You can do a loop around them and then typically they'll lose you for a second until you're like right behind them and then you can re-engage your target so it's it's a lot it's a lot easier when you're playing movement characters when you're playing big boys like gibby and caustic you your primary use is to like tank damage you automatically take reduced damage than all the other legends and gibby with his arm shield you know you can really be that um the meat the meat bag you know typically when i'm fighting and you know i know that either one or two of them are alive and they're split um really with any fight that i take i never really i rarely do this where i'm like up close and both of our bodies are 100 percent exposed i usually practice the 50 50 rule where i'm back here and let's say there's a piece of cover here right so all you can see is like maybe mid chest and upward so when he's looking at me this is what he sees as well so both of us are at 50 50. it works even better when you are on height so if he's down low, it's automatically harder for him to aim up. But you practice 50-50 by only peeking like this. Or if you know that they're like um, at a disadvantage or they're distracted, I mean, you can go full peek and just, you know, expose your whole body. But if you want to play it safe, most of us, they, we just do the 50-50 rule. So we, you know, chip damage. That was absolutely horrible. But um, the reason for this... Is because if you have more of your body exposed, yes, it is easier to get headshots. Because if all I see is his head, and I'm just unloading on his, you know, on his dome, you're gonna do more damage. But it's harder for them to hit, and you gotta also, you know, take in consideration that he's aiming up. So it's a lot harder to aim up rather than shoot down than it is to be on top and do this. So when you're when you're pushing fights, and there's height that you could take that you can have a vantage point over. Like a third party that you're about to do or even if they're pushing you and you can get to higher ground before they do i highly recommend it even if it's something subtle like this like i'm only a little bit higher than him but if i crouch we're automatically in the 50 50 margin you know what i mean so i could see his like mid torso up and he could see the same for me so like it, it's just it's it's a lot more convenient for you know pushing fights when they can't hit your whole body so when you do become one shot all you got to do is push back just a little bit more for you when you're in cover when you're using an assault rifle like a 301 or a flatline i don't really like the hemlock it's too unpredictable for me i know they just did a patch on it to make it a little bit better but what i like to do is i like to have range you know what i mean so 
this is gonna take a little bit of practice and I'm not warm up, I'm not warm at all yet this is like literally like I just got up I'm, I'm starting to record this video but when you are um, when you're using an assault rifle use that to your advantage like you gotta remember I'm gonna do this really sloppy but if this was a real scenario this is probably how much damage you do to a real person so if you're aiming all over the place and you're doing that you get them pretty much one a lot of times you're gonna only crack their armor because they're gonna be moving you gotta remember these guys are standing still so they're like really easy to beam but in a real scenario, I'm going to try and like mess this up. So if you do a lot of damage, you're veering off to the left and the right, and you're doing that. You're going to pretty much crack them or, you know, break a shield. Once you get better, you will be able to do, you know, stuff like one clipping and everything. But focus on destroying their armor, in a sense, more than, more than you know, absolutely getting that knock. If you're like medium to close, what, what I determine as medium to close, this right here would be medium range for me. At least anything beyond this is long range because it's harder to hit your shots close range for me would probably be around this little ledge here to that to that dummy that, that's close range at least to me that that's how I see it so when you're when you're practicing stuff like this and you guys are close range typically I wouldn't like to use the weapon with a 3x but sometimes you have no choice that's when you would, you know resort to your sidearm and you would start hitting him with that but the good thing about um, doing this with like an assault rifle it's like let's say that they're split like they're split like this one's over there one's over there they're both doing something and then this guy's coming at you right so you practice the 50 50 rule and you do all that damage to him i mean probably not that much but let's say you do this right i'm gonna shoot slow just so i can give you an accurate example let's say you just crack his armor and by that time you'd have to reload and let's say you're missing maybe two bars from your shield you can easily push him now because he's low and you can start to kill him two shots now you got to worry about these two guys to the left and right typically what i like to do is i don't like to be in a box so i will back out of this area allow them to push to my current location and then start shooting at them from a different vantage point you know what i mean so this is a lot it's a lot to cover and it, it's just you know it, it, it's hard for me to like tell you everything because there's so much that you need to know and i don't know what like what you already know and what you don't know so um, I guess the the most knowledgeable part of this video would be when I'm actually doing these things in uh, real matches against real people now typically one thing that I've recently started doing is utilizing arc stars you don't even need to hit him like if I throw one right here it automatically cracks his shield you don't like I don't typically like to use these for kills. I, I normally carry one or two on me at all times for my kit. Uh, this is like really recent. This is as of like two weeks. Two weeks. I haven't been using these a long time. I've been sleeping on them because I like to carry more ammo and heals in my inventory than I do um, arc stars and frags. But if you stick somebody with one of these, like if you're in a gunfight and, and you're not good at sticking people, but if you stick someone with it, like he's a bad example. I gotta kill this guy. Let's say they're full health, right? And you're fighting and you're fighting and you're close enough to just you know rail him i'm really bad at this but like you stick him right that's 90 damage done and he's automatically one shot so you can easily just finish him off with like a punch or something with purple armor with red armor it's a little bit more complicated but arc stars and frags are more useful than you would than you would think what i like to use these is if i'm like on world's edge and i'm playing the you know five story buildings what i like to do is just camp on top of the zip line and aim down at them so when they do come up they're really easy to hit and you can easily stick them as they're coming up the zip lines so once you actually do stick them and everything do all that damage you can easily come in and just get that kill you can just finish it off and cripple them so there's only so much i can really tell you in the firing range i mean if you single it out in the comments and you want to know what exactly i need to go over in like further detail i could do that so like if it's certain things like strafing if you want me to do a whole video on strafing and you know how to get better and certain tips and tricks you can use on strafing i can do that what the hell is that but for the time being right now i really just want to go ahead and get into a game so i can you know show you what what i normally do off of the dropship launch where I normally land where to land if you want an easy fight to pick and everything like that so I can show you the real mechanics that I'm showing you here in a real game so this way you get a better grasp of it I really hope this helps I've never really made a educational video on how to get better at a certain game so bear with me but um, let's go ahead and get into the real the real situations now I'm not gonna lie to you guys it's been pretty difficult finding a match that 
uh, meets my criteria. Like these 50,000 kill players have been on all day today, and then just, it's just been rough. It's been really rough. Like they're they're like on my skill level, so the tactics I use are using right back at my face, and that just never looks good. Like it just never it, it doesn't feel good either. You know, <laughs> I'm probably gonna have a, <coughs> a really big rage compilation by the end of this. But we're gonna try this again. So we're gonna land here. There is a team directly above me. Typically what I like to do is just grab a weapon of some sort and just immediately like rush them on the roof or wherever wherever they landed. I don't want to really miss anything like this purple mag right here. But it, I don't think they landed directly in the building. They probably landed around me or you know in my close vicinity. Regardless, you're gonna want to be very aggressive here. Because the faster that they can get kitted is the faster you can get kitted. So I'm opening fire on them, deterring her from doing whatever it is that she does. I know she went inside, so I'm going to take the top floor from her. Because she's probably going to go upstairs. Typically, everybody just goes upstairs. They, they don't know any better. She actually went around. She's taken height. See what I mean? So this is like a high skill player. This is a player that kind of knows a little something about something. And wants to uh, make your life a little bit more difficult. So it seemed like she was getting hit from the back as well. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the bat. She is currently aping my guts. She got Millie rocked, but it doesn't matter. You wanna kinda get kitted as fast as possible before the other team comes at you, so. Like they're already on the roof. And they're already aping you. Hardcore. I'm going to promptly get my ass inside and try and heal up before they can get like a, a good vantage on me so typically with players like that it's super easy especially doing like regular door baits like they stand in front of the door and then you just like open it in front of them and they shit their pants because a lot of times they're going to be getting like frag grenades out or arc stars or they're in the process of kicking so when you open a door like you already know he had like an oh shit moment like he opened a door in his face and his whole plan was to kick it down to like ape you but Remember, I think I think a really good key factor that I should bring up here is when they're really hungry for you, that is when they're most vulnerable. Like right here, when she pushed me. All she saw was red, and all she wanted to do was just, you know, kill me. She wanted she wanted to add me to her tracker. That's all that's all she could think about and that's all she wanted to get done. Was put me in the ground so that she can loot my box and continue on uh, doing whatever the hell it is that she was doing. So when they're like that, it's really easy to turn around and just one clip them. Or, you know, do a really big amount of damage. Like, I don't know, I don't know how to articulate this correctly, but like, when they're in the middle of chasing you, especially behind a corner, like, let's say she was right here, right? Or I was right there and I was the horizon. Let's say I did all that damage to me, right? So now I'm the horizon, I'm running around the corner, my weapon's not aimed, I'm not expecting myself to be standing probably like right here already pre-aiming the door so the moment she peeks you can easily just take her out there's like there's no contest there you can just put her in the ground and then make sure that she's dead same premise goes when they're like on height over here and you want to like press up and when you're on top and they're shooting down and let's say it's a pathfinder right so you know he has one grapple maybe a zip line so he's gonna grapple up he's gonna get you absolutely one shot right when you drop down He's going to want to chase. He's not going to stay up there because they don't think like that. So you take cover behind this post. He's going to chase. You're going to go up here and take height. Now he can't get up from you. He can't get up to you. You know what I mean? So now he's forced to either go around or climb, which should give you ample time to heal and get ready for his attack. So this way you're ready for it. So pulling up here, I know one of them's knocked. Probably in the Gibby bubble. Gibby's probably rezzing right now. We're doing something along those lines. I can wipe the Gibby. Octane shit in his pants, he doesn't know what to do. You're gonna wanna ape him, hardcore. Now everybody's dead. I know Gibby has a uh, has a red, but I wanna swap with somebody immediately, so this way I can, you know, feel comfortable and I don't have to be completely stressed out over the fact that I could get third partied here, so. That was a classic third party. There's like nothing wrong about that. You, you aped him, you did everything you could to kill him, you eliminated the primary threat, and then, you know, went on to target the next the next uh, opponent which was the octane so if it was a more complicated situation like let's say that the gibby rezzed the person in the bubble and that person never got thirsted if he actually got that person up you know you would have to approach that just a little bit differently you would want to target the person that was immediately brought back to you know life 
and then once that person's dead you're gonna want to attack the Gibby. You're gonna wanna eliminate the weakest person first and then hit the strongest. So, we're going over to Solar. I know that there's a fight. I know that people are popping off over there. They're still going. I think one just got thirsted, I'm not sure. I hear a car, so there's a lot of action going on over here. What I like to do, especially when I'm playing Valkyrie, is do a flyover to see where people are at and what I can, where I can land. So in these situations, I'm going to land right here because there's a piece of cover for me to use, right? They're most likely going to, you know, try and ape me or whatever the case is. But that's one of those situations where, you know, I did a decent bit of damage on that Bangalore. Bangalore is shit in her pants. She didn't expect me to do all that, so she threw down her ult, which is probably going to hit me. Unless I play it right. I dodge the ult, I get back on the roof. Bangalore is still right there. This is when you utilize the Arc Star. You place a good arc star and you crack her, or both of them. In this situation, I didn't hit any of them, but well, that doesn't matter. She's doing a 50-50. I can't practice the 50-50 rule because I'm just not there. So she's probably going to tell her friend that I'm low or whatever, and they're going to want to push. They're pushing the wrong way, though. Allows me to knock one. Now that I know one is knocked, i got to figure out where exactly this bang is. So she keeps pinging, uh, peeking me from the lower section. Once I get a bat off and I do 44 to her, she's going to go inside, most definitely. Allow me to crack her. I'm going to go around the, the side door over here. She, she's, not, she's not accustomed to really like fighting like that. Why did my jump get cancelled? I need to refill on light ammo because I have a feeling I'm about to get third party any second now. So When you have so many teams around you... you this really like molds the way you want to play this game so i know they're on the top so they're either going to push to the building i'm standing on now i'm getting padded on never a good sign never a good sign that that's why you want to get the hell out of there they're gonna try to climb up to me i mean whatever works for them but typically if you crack them you hurt them a lot They'll sort of die out, but not really. I know Octane doesn't have a pad. Now I'm getting now I'm getting shot at from the side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna promptly get the hell out of here. That tactical retreat that I was talking about, this is the perfect time to use it. You don't want to stay there, especially when you know that a third party is gonna do chip damage to you. Uh, you never want to stay in those situations. You wanna you wanna make the game favorable for you. So if staying there means that you're gonna get a lot of damage done to yourself, you never want to do it. Now, this same team is really aggressive towards me. For some reason, they really want me dead. I'm running low on bats, so... My only option, really, is to kill them. She's probably gonna go for res on the roof. I unfortunately could not get the kill on this guy but you want to play aggressive because you don't want this dude to live you know what I mean so you're gonna want to kill him as many times as you can so I'm really just manipulating the ground for my personal gain here in fact I should probably thirst this kid before she reses him like a fourth time or fifth time or whatever the case is now I know she's charging up a, a rampage, but she could shoot through this door. She has not rezzed the octane yet. But I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive than I should here because I want him dead. So I'm going to back up. In certain situations, and you, you'll come to realize that you won't be able to win like every game. It just It just won't happen for you, so... You gotta, you gotta come to terms that there's gonna be some games where you just simply won't be able to come on top of at all. Only reason I'm aping her so hard is because I know she's so weak. This is self res. I'm getting shot at from like every, literally every direction, but I need his heals. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them from him. So I refilled on light ammo and I refilled on heals, sort of. Just sells, but you know, it makes a big difference from what you want to get done. So I know I was getting shot at from the roof. 
seems like they're getting hit now. I might have a little bit of time to go loot this self-res from this chick. Or not. That's fine. I'm going to utilize my only battery here. To try and wipe this team. I don't know where she is, so I'm not going to really challenge this too much. She's porting out this Octane, which isn't good. He actually took the port. I'm going to try and kill this guy because I don't want him to live. It's the last thing I want, so he's dead. I don't have any bats, so what I'm going to do is tactically retreat again and just swap to a purple. This is what I was talking about. So now that I have a purple armor and you know some more heals, I'm feeling a little bit better about myself. Not all the way, but just 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 a tad, just enough to really make it make it count. I'm gonna actually switch to a rampage here. Like I said, this is just my point of view on this certain topic and this certain situation. So, you know, you can put your little spin on it, and you can go ahead and put your own adaptation to it, and you can take certain key factors from what I've described and what I've you know tried to, you know show you guys and just use certain elements and put them together and make your own recipe for success but I just showed you the basic steps and the basic maneuvers some advanced maneuvers of how to approach 1v2 situations and those same tactics apply for 1v3 situations as well there's no difference and just you got to be a little bit more cautious because there's that one guy that's left and you you know constantly have to be on the lookout for him but um, I hope this video was helpful uh, if there's anything that you think I've missed or anything that I need to go into deeper detail for, uh, you can go ahead and in the comments below or just DM me on Instagram and I'll see what I can do for that type of video. But this was really fun to create, you know, it just showed a big aspect of what <laughs> just showed a bit aspect of, you know, what to do and how to approach certain situations. But I hope you guys did take a couple things from this and, you know, you learned a little bit and I hope it does help you. So. If you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button for me. If you didn't, go ahead and dislike it. <laughs> it just hurt my feelings a little bit, but I'm hoping that I can help you in any way that I can. And uh, I will see you guys on the next one. Up here. So he's weak. This is when you would want to push. Winter can be fun. Or just die. One of the two. I don't know. Like you know that they're right here. So typically what I like to do is jump off. And I'll show you why. You want to bait them out. You don't want to just, you know, give them the dub here. And it's a bunch of master players. Fan fucking tastic, bro! Holy shit!